guys, Dusty Baker, Crossroads Bison. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you guys for watching us. Hope you guys have enjoyed the working videos. It's one of my favorite things to be a part of, but not really. <laughs> uh, you got to get the bison work, but I, I hope you guys have enjoyed it. It is a lot of stress on me, and if you are a bison producer, bison owner, bison rancher, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It is a very stressful time. Um, if you are working bison, especially if you're the owner, because uh, it is just, it's very stressful because you want everything to go smooth and uh, you don't want any animals injured and you don't want your helpers injured as well. So anyways, just want to say thank you for being a part of that. And I've got a lot of good feedback. I got a lot of questions on stuff. Check it out. I love it when they're rolling around. Oh, look at here. This guy. Mr. Haas, the man himself. He's getting big. He's getting big. He's uh, ready to hit the green grass out here. And uh, they'll be moving out here to the pasture to replace uh, the Big Joe herd very soon. Yep. Good job, Haas. We'll see you out there. Got some rolling going on. That is some of our Canadian bison right here. And uh, they're already getting acclimated uh, to me and getting used to Kevin. Um, Kevin's been over here a little bit, but they are getting used to me. I spend more time over here. And uh, of course, the Dakota Pure Bison are getting very used to us and have been used to us. Having these Dakota Pure calves here has helped the um, Wolverine Bison uh, acclimate uh, to me a lot easier just having them because I think they see how uh, they act and then the Canadian uh, the Wolverine Boston are like oh okay he's good he's he's gonna take care of us he's gonna feed and water us and, and let us out and go graze and all that stuff so I think they're uh, they're uh, they're getting used to us and so very excited for them and so if you're ever wondering the difference you can always look for the yellow tags there's some right over there. Well, Haas just covered them up. The yellow tags bison, um, there's one right there, are the wolverine bison. The double white tags are all the Dakota Pure calves that I have. So they're all getting along pretty well. But one of the reasons why we mix them all together is if you watch one of my last videos I explained, they're all the same age. They're about the same weight, and they'll figure out their own uh, pecking order themselves, which is great. That's just part of it. Uh, but these guys will all grow up together and uh, excited for the future here. But I did get a lot of good feedback and uh, I, I know that you've seen some changes here recently. Um, uh, a little bit of changes here and there and I want to talk to you about that. Alright guys, so um, what I want to do is talk to you about some of this today. And uh, I am standing here on the west side of our barn, and that's because it is so windy. I'm trying to reduce. I have my noise deal on, but I'm trying to reduce the uh, uh, wind as much as possible. And I got the uh, calves back here behind me. Got some birds out too. Lovely. So, uh, one of the first things I want to talk to you about um, is uh, who is Cole, and uh, the footage uh, seems more like a production. So, um, let me start off by saying uh, that Cole is a good friend of mine, and he's been he's been helping uh, as far as when we work the bison. Cole and another buddy uh, Chandler come from Dallas, and uh, play, uh, Cole and I and his brother Carson and I used to coach together in Plano, and we became close friends. I even lived with Cole uh, during a time when I was in Plano, Texas, teaching and coaching. So coaching, teaching buddies there have kept up and uh, he's kind of into technology and those things and um, he I got him to come help uh, film the bison for me when we do the workings and so that's how kind of uh, Cole came into this and so the other part of this is guys when 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 we do work the bison uh, and I may have explained this several times before or have mentioned it but it is it is difficult for me to focus with a camera and um, <laughs> It, it is really difficult for me to focus and and it's not safe just to be honest with you I, I've tried to do the working and film at the same time and it's I can't focus on what I'm doing 
And I know a lot of you probably understand that, but there are some people that really kind of question what's wrong with the production and all that, and how come I'm not right here in front of you, in front of the camera, doing the normal vlog style. Well, it is very difficult for me to do. It's not safe on me. It's not safe for them and, and the people around me because when I have that many people helping me, I've got people filming and I've got people working there and uh, it's I have to sort of manage and overwatch everything and I don't let anybody in the bison pens except for me and Kevin and Kevin's worked at a zoo before and has much experience obviously if you follow us along Kevin has uh, helps take care of the bison and so we're the most two experienced people in there uh, as far as working bison goes and so I don't let anybody in with the bison except me and Kevin and and so that I'm not able to really uh, film and it's hard and I'd love to stop during uh, during the working and, and talk to you and explain to you and maybe I'll do a better job at that with with uh, the guys that help me film but um, it's just when I'm in there it's just like a football game for me when I'm in the moment you know you only get so much time with those kids and the players and, and in that game and you play for Friday nights um, you only get that much time, and when you're in that moment as a coach or as a player, um, that's what your focus is. Well, that's what it's supposed to be anyways, and that's the way it was for me. So when I'm in those moments of working those bison, and I've got all these people here for me uh, for or for us, for Marissa and I, um, when I've got all those people here, we have to use that time because that is precious time to have all those people there, and they want to be a part of it and want to help, but... Um, since I had those people, you really got to uh, uh, tune in my focus is what I probably should say uh, on what we're doing here. And plus, we want to get these guys in and out as soon as possible. That is our goal. So my point is, we want to get those bison in and out as fast as possible. We want to keep the stress down as much as we can. Can we keep the stress completely down? Absolutely not. Uh, that'll never happen. These animals are gonna go through some stress, obviously when they're put in a different situation, like they, like they do when we work them. Um, it's just how can we reduce the stress? And I think every time that we work the bison, whether it's at the OG or here at the Ponderosa, um, we can learn how to reduce that over time. And uh, here at the Ponderosa, I think we'll have a great opportunity to do that as we, uh, you know, we are looking into getting a hydraulic system and uh, possibly some hydraulic working uh, handling system as well. And uh, we want to reduce that stress as much as possible. So what all that means is um, I try to do that as best as I can. And with a camera in my hand, it's just so difficult. So Colin Chandler film and uh, Chandler is actually a professional videographer he shoots commercials and stuff like that and uh, he's just a connection through Cole that I that we just got lucky with and we became friends uh, with him over time and uh, so those guys have some professional equipment I know it looks a little bit different but um, so I just want you to kind of bear with me we're gonna balance this thing out and work uh, it is so nice whether I'm welding or I'm out in the pasture doing something with the bison it is so nice to have somebody film for me and something you guys got to think about is when I'm vlogging if I can't set my GoPro down and and catch if I can't catch all those angles you're missing out and uh, there's a lot of things that you miss out on just because I'm by myself 95% of the time I'm alone out here and uh, I have to be safe my wife reminds me of that daily and uh, a lot of the times I have Brooks and I can't uh, get out here with the bison a lot of the times and so um, you guys miss some of those angles you miss some of those highlights that we see with the bison uh, that you may not catch or that I may not can catch so uh, I want you guys to to help me out and 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 be with me on this thing because um, if Cole or Chandler is up here filming or mostly Cole is up here filming and Marissa spends time filming for me and uh, a lot of the time she's behind the camera getting stuff so if you start to see the the vlog style change a little bit uh, there's always gonna be a balance I'm always gonna be right here I promise you um, and uh, you'll still see me doing this like I've done since 2019 when I started this when I started filming 
and putting out uh, the videos. That's not going to change, guys. I'm always going to be right here. I promise you. Uh, I'm an old school person. I don't like a lot of change, but it's little change is good here and there. So. Also got a lot of good feedback on uh, Doc's squeeze chute. Uh, you guys obviously had the opportunity to see the difference between the manual squeeze chute that we've been using for like four years uh, versus Doc's hydraulic squeeze chute. I hope you guys understand a little bit more of why we want a hydraulic squeeze chute and how much easier it is, safer. There's so many good benefits about a hydraulic squeeze chute. The unfortunate part, is it is expensive and, and it's something you only should have to use for us twice a year uh, maybe a couple other times for other stuff but um, you typically don't have to use it that much and, and it is an expensive system but you guys got to see that for the first time um, as far as my bison being worked with a hydraulic system and uh, so that is why we need a hydraulic system and so we uh, we are looking into that as we speak and that's something we want to hopefully get done by uh, this fall so along with uh, doc being here to help uh, i love the feedback also of having brandon um, there as well brandon came and worked uh, in the spring or fall of 20 i think was the first time we actually got big joe worked um, and in the squeeze chute and we got his weight which uh, then he weighed 1900 pounds and um, so uh, Brandon was a part of that and in case you guys don't know Brandon is a freshman he uh, he goes to a local high school not far from here uh, but he is Doc Parsons grandson and as you can tell he's already pretty a knowledgeable kid he's a uh, pretty smart and I'm sure as much time as he spends with his papa um, he uh, he's gonna gain that knowledge that he uh, that you just can't get enough knowledge from from uh, Doc Parsons and so uh, having Brandon here was awesome I'm glad you guys enjoyed the interview and you never know you may see Brandon more in the future as he as he gets older and probably wants to continue working bison and raising bison and you can already see he's he's uh, excited about the genetics which he's learning from uh, his grandpa and um, uh, that's what I'm about too I'm about the genetics and, and um, uh, I'm learning from Doc and I'm interested in the genetics as well but We'll probably see Brandon more in the future, hopefully as uh, he grows up and graduates from high school and goes to college and does those things. Uh, I bet he's gonna be around for a while uh, as long as his grandpa's around. And even when his grandpa retires, I'm sure he'll continue on uh, that knowledge and that experience and grow from there. So a couple of things going on around here. We've got some fence building started um and that's very exciting we're going to start moving the bison over probably in about i'm going to say about three weeks or a month and uh the green grass over here where's where the fire started um it is very pretty and very green you know one of the other tough uh, parts of uh, of that weekend was the uh not catching dunbar i want to talk a little bit about that as well i will say that that is my fault <laughs> what happened was that Friday night, we were actually going to catch the big herd with feed, and um, I wasn't able to because Doc called us, and we had to go to um, Stratford to uh, pick up their wolverine bison because they came in on a truck, um, a semi-truck um, from Canada, and there's a lot that goes on behind that, but they came down, and Doc had them at his place for a while, kind of let them acclimate. And get them back on their feet and um, then he called me and said hey come get them we're working them and so that's what I did is we ran up there and we picked the bison up uh, we picked our wolverine bison up and that was the Friday night that I was supposed to catch um, the Dunbar herd and so that kind of put a, a kink in our system and uh, that was one thing that set us back and so since then we've worked the calves I still got some of the big herd to catch uh, but um, they, uh, we're going to show you that as well as the, me working the calves. I strapped a GoPro to my chest and uh, there's no fancy footage or anything like that. We'll see what you guys think about it. It is raw footage straight from my chest running around working those calves with Kevin. So stay tuned for that, working those calves 
finally caught them. They were easy to catch like the, the next day or so. Anyways, um, but the Dunbar, that did set us back a little bit and I was disappointed in myself. But that takes time and I, I know a lot of bison people out there that probably, that if, if you do watch, I know that you've been down this road before, you've had trouble catching bison. If you haven't, that's awesome. But uh, we've been able to catch those bison um, and, and things were a bit different this time. That's something we should have done weeks ahead of time, like one or two weeks ahead of time. Get them coming in, bring them, get them in a routine, and then when you get them in that routine with feed or whatever it is, cubes, uh, then you catch them. And uh, we weren't able to do that, and I take the blame for that. So um, the good thing is we've got half of them worked. We've got Dunbar worked, obviously. But uh, we've got Kevin and I, it won't be a problem because since then, they've been coming in and out of the pens and Kevin's been feeding them and drawing them up there. So, and he said he could catch them all. And um, we'll catch them and get those guys taken care of. So, besides that, everybody is doing great. Everybody's doing fine. Here is the Big Joe Herd hanging out. And uh, guys, the other big thing I'm excited about is babies. We should be having babies pretty soon. In May, uh, we should start to see babies, which is just a couple weeks away. And that is the next big exciting thing. Besides getting the fence built, it is almost red dog season. And that is the other exciting part. Hey guys, well thank you for watching. And uh, if you haven't, guys, check out our website. We've got jerky sticks still left on there. It's 100% bison. We are currently out of jerky, but we have our snack sticks on there. You guys can check it out. Of course, we have all of our bison gear. And we've got our hats on there. And uh, we've got some new shirts coming out here pretty soon. And uh, we will have some more bison jerky um, soon as well. So thank you guys for watching us. And thank you for being a part of the working videos. Hope you enjoyed it. And if you haven't, you can always go back and check them. They're always a show for sure. And in the meantime, we'll see you guys next time.